What's up, everyone? It's Bones here. I'd like to begin this video by giving a huge shout out to TCG Player for the opportunity to be a part of their affiliate program. If you want to help a content creator out, all you have to do is click on the TCG Player link down below, and it won't cost you anything either. For today's video, I'd like to begin by saying that anything I say isn't meant for any financial advice. These episodes of Yuginomics will always be to analyze the market and to keep up with everything going on in our game at the time of recording. So the first set of cards that I would like to talk about are the gimmick puppet cards number 40 is only at six listings left you also saw another one at eight listings left if you saw at the right of the screen but you'll see how we just had a bunch of non-momentum until one day it shot up and that's what new support can do for an archetype as that's what you kind of also get from the nine dollars fourteen dollars twenty two dollars just people going crazy for the new gimmick puppet card i haven't really gone too deep into the archetype myself i don't know how the exact ftk works i just know that you can do it with the field spell and that brings me on to the next card number 88 i also know that this is used in the ftk as i've seen just a small replay of it again i don't know what it does but just another shot up in price here as a card that was probably worth under four dollars here as we see 350 here went all the way down to about two dollars is all the way up to near ten dollars now moderately play limited is seven dollars nine dollars then shoots up to 11 before 14 again you really don't want to buy into hype like this when it comes because you really don't know how these archetypes are going to translate into the tcg that said if you are a fan of the deck want these cards and you may not want to miss out sometimes you kind of have to swallow the bullet and i want to point that out because there is the ubel card that if you missed out on when ubel's quarter century rare was about 90 dollars now it's sitting at 150 145 for the verified seller with a near mint copy. It's just not ideal if you're trying to get into the meta game and the cards are at these prices, especially when they were bought out not too long ago and just at $90. It shows how these cards can go up and down so easily, and I think that's important to note for anyone in this market. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a hard game to invest in, and if you were to want to invest, in my opinion, I think it's usually better to go for cards that may see use in multiple formats rather than just modern but then i also would like to go over the alternate forms of ubel and really just the terror incarnate as you see that every high rarity quantity is pretty much out the ubel terror incarnate doesn't even have a near mint listing on the tcg player market and that just means that people are going to be listing it at crazy prices as we see a 420 dollars for a lightly played we still have legacy of destruction coming out which means that there is going to be be more demand for the Ubel stuff. Then we have the Battles of Legends set, which I think brings out Spirit of Ubel, and that's only going to raise demand even higher. So these aren't cards that I think are going down soon, but I think are worth mentioning because recently we did get the Battles of Legends Chapter 1, which brought us some ultra rares, and you'll see that they're inching close to $10 little by little. We also have the rares off of the raw yellow pack. Same thing with the Ultimate Nightmare that you can get if you want cheaper copies of it. Listings are down from under 100 so people are on this it's something that like gimmick puppets has affection from the anime which will make people want to pick it up as nostalgia is really kind of a big part in this game but then you'll also even see the spirit of ubel under 100 listings and this is going up a day after i'm recording so they may be a little bit different at the time that you see this but the point is that people have their eyes on these cards i don't think that we're going to see a cooling off moment until we see is some type of metagame impact that negatively impacts Ubel. Now the next set of cards I would like to talk about are Trickstar and these are another set of cards that got support via yeah, the wave of light stuff that we'll be getting over the next year and if fire is any indication of what they may do with light then I think keeping up with the Trickstar card is a little bit interesting just because we've seen them do damage before and I know that the archetype is a lot slower for MR5 or Master Roll 2020 where the extra monster zone doesn't matter for fusion synchro exceed summoning etc and really only matters for link summoning but the entire point of this is to show that we are low on listings also with 25 copies or 25 listings left of the ultra rare from the pins ultra rare from code of the duelist at 50 listings left another thing that you'll notice here is that all these cards that are getting support besides the fiendsmith archetype which i'm not really going to go over in this video i'll probably have a separate video for that but they do use field 
spells. And that brings me to my next card, Vados. Quarter century copy here. Just because it's at $65, it is the max rarity. And because all these new field spell decks are coming into the game, I think this is an interesting card to look at. I'll go over to the regular secret rare, which is $16, $20 from what we see. 31 there, but the first near mint verified seller is at $20 at the time of recording with 8 left. And you'll see that it is getting some traction going up. People are noticing that there are more field spells coming into the game that may be really good. If you're looking to out some of those field spells and Ash is like the only thing that you play, this can technically become a second copy of Ash for those field spells. And I also would like to go over some of the Phantom Nightmare stuff. The Skull Guardian Voiceless Voice, I would like to talk about just because I do think that we are going to have a period where this deck gets a lot better via the ban list and then Legacy of Destruction giving it new support, at least until we get the Spirit of Ubel, which raises the healing of that deck and then we probably see some hype go that way. We are seeing that Skull Guardian really is going down. Right now, the Near Mint first ed English version is going for 125 at the cheapest. As far as verified sellers go, though it does climb up to 143 quickly, but at this point I just think it's people fire selling, kind of noticing that things aren't trending the greatest for the voiceless voice stuff. And then I also would like to go over some of the fire stuff. I think that this can potentially be a steal right now, because I don't think that things like Promethean Princess are going to be hit just yet. And seeing as we have stuff like SP Little Knight that went up to like $700, even $600 right now, I don't know what the current price of it is, but it's $574 for Near Mint First Ed Verified Seller. And it just shows the potential that you can get from something like a quarter century rare that happens to see a lot of play. And I don't think that would change as long as they don't ban this, which I just don't think that they would. The next thing that I would like to talk about is some of the older cards that also may see play today or later on, depending on the support that we get. The reason that I mentioned these cards are because right now we're in the middle of a tier zero format, waiting on a new ban list, and people are playing alternative formats, and that just creates more competition in the market. So if you're looking to just get a cheap copy, there's a bunch of them that you can get. There's a super rare down here from Fusion Enforcer if you just want a shiny version of it. There's also the ultra rare from Magnificent Mavens, which you can get. It has a bunch of listings at 92 cents there. We do see that it's going up there. It's now nearing towards the dollar. And again, it makes sense. It is a nice version of it. It is kind of mid-max as we do see the Astral Pack Super then we have the Parallel Rare, the Raw Yellow Mega Pack, which is at about 148. From what we could see there, again, if we click on it, we'll see that there are some copies under a dollar. But if you do want a Near Mint First Ed, you are going to be paying a couple bucks for your first verified seller Near Mint First Ed. So just one of those cards that is beginning to see play in Edison and does come back and forth into Modern, which I would like to reiterate is worth keeping an eye on performing. And this is an interesting card just because it sees play in old formats but it also will be seeing play as we do get these new cards but it's also a card that could potentially be on ban list watch over the next year it's just an extra copy of one of those field spells and this has been a card that's always been on people's radars when field spells start to get strong again and you'll see that there's a couple of max rarity versions of it with the ulti and the quarter century but there are a lot of cheaper ones that you can get though they are running pretty pretty low on listings, which is important to note. We do have 100 listings. Secret Rare from Legendary Collection Kaiba, so that's not too bad. Same thing with the 153 from the Monstrous Revenge set. Just another card to keep an eye on, in my opinion, is if reforming does start to see more play in Modern, it's just one of those things that could cause multiple different markets to start buying into it, and then just slowly all the copies of it go up because people are buying all the different ones and just increasing them by taking out some of those listings. And I also would like to talk about the Lost Art of Solemn Judgment. This is another card that not only sees play in Goats and sees play in Edison, but because of the Horus cards, they also are seeing Solemn Judgment come back as it is there to protect their floodgates, all things like that. There's a bunch of different max rarity versions that you can get, whether it be the Ghost slash Gold Rare, the Ultimate, or the Collector's Rare. The Lost Art, I thought, was an interesting one, just because it's the only one that has the original art here in the TCG. If you want to get something that isn't max rarity, is kind of unique for the TCG, 
This is something right now that you can get at about eight bucks, nine bucks for a near mint. It's a verified seller. And the next card is Soul Release, and there's only one shiny printing of this, which is the Super Rare. Right now, it's going for about seven bucks. This is another card that sees play in Edison. It is seeing play in Modern. I think you could wait on this one, though, just as Snake Eyes does get hit enough out the ban list. It means that this card could go down in price if it only is seeing play in Edison. But we have the commons that see there's a whole page of commons if you want to get a common. It's going to cost you over a dollar, which is unfortunate. But again, you could just wait until a new ban list to see what happens with the new Snake Eye stuff. Finally, I would like to go over Gold Sark. Gold Sark is another card that I want to go over because we got the Shock Mushroom. I'll put a picture of it up above. It could be more Thunder support down the line. It really is Thunder support when you read it, but do get something like Colossus back and Thunder gets more cards. Gold Sark becomes a card that people could start gravitating to and we do have a couple of max rarity copies here with the secret pharaohs rare and the ultra pharaohs rare also notice a bunch of low rarity copies of it as well we do have the secret rare hidden summoners version the gold rare from premium gold which i know this one went up to like 20 bucks back before we got the pharaohs rare replaced the max rarity of it but this one isn't too bad just because it's one of the few gold rares that actually kind of fit the card you'll see that it actually is pretty low on listing with just 33 just another card that i thought was interesting because of the new support cards that we got Lee, i would like to go over some of the age of overlord stuff as we do see some people playing horus for their rogue decks seti is still at 32 listings left for 130 which is really ew at the same time i understand people wanting to play their favorite decks in modern and then there's stuff like typhon which i also think is really interesting because right now it's at a really low point it's crashing and it's been crashing i think that this is just a card that could be a staple in many formats to come maybe it's not just its time yet of course we never know how the meta is going to develop from here on out but just something that i thought was worth mentioning as it's creeping under 200 dollars and we even have a near mint first ed verified seller for 200 dollars flat with the 78 cent shipping for everyone who's made it this far i'd like to thank you for watching and for the 700 plus subscribers i truly appreciate your support and now that we've monetized the channel giving us access to supers and members memberships means that more awesome stuff is on the horizon. The channel membership, just click on the description below and there will be a link that takes you there. You'll also notice a free Discord link that I've made for us too. If you want to support me as a content creator, even if you can't donate supers or get a membership for the channel, clicking on those thumbs up and subscribe buttons help a lot too. For those wondering, I do plan on making updates to the channel as the support on the channel grows. Anyways, I hope to see you on the next one. It's Bones, signing out.